So where did it all begin? Let's recap. The year 1993 saw the launch off of the IBM Simon, capable of sending more than just text. It also included a calendar, word time, address book, notepad, email, and even a touchscreen, sold for the low price of just $899. In 1996, the Nokia 9000 is created, and is a cross between a phone and a PDA. After five years of intensive labor, the term smartphone was born, in 1999, to the Ericsson GS88 phone. However, the first phone to be marked as smart was the Ericsson R380 operating on Symbian OS in 2000. It too combined a mobile phone with the functions of PDA. So where does this lead us? In 2007, the first iPhone was released by Apple. This is Steve. Steve and his minions created the iPhone. What's that, this and that, this and that, and this and that. And voila, society can now maximize their use of the iPhone's plethora of functions, since there's an app for that. That is, if you can get your hands on one. This is Tom. Tom needs a new phone. He's needed a new one for a while. Like a sucker, he waits in line and is lucky enough to get an iPhone. Since the purchase of his new smartphone, Tom can't seem to put it down. He's taking stealthy pictures of someone he finds funny on the bus, sending them to his friends as he rides the SkyTrain. Videotaping his friends doing something stupid, no doubt, recording his school lectures and so on and so forth. Tom has taken an interest in the surveillance of others, and on June 15, 2011, he records the infamous Vancouver Canuck hockey riot. Tom uses his new citizen journalist skills to film angry fans and destroy the downtown area with the intention of uploading these clips on the internet. However, the next morning it dawns on Tom that he had become more intoxicated than he had believed he had. And as he goes to upload the clips, from the previous night, he finds a post of himself on Facebook. It seems that someone had been recording him with a smartphone. Unfortunately for Tom, the advanced technology of the iPhone was able to capture a clear image of his face, and it seems Tom's face is now immortalized on Facebook, and you'll most likely be fined by the VPD. So the moral of the story? With the ability of smartphones to record video and upload that footage instantly, and as no one can be absolutely sure when someone is watching us, perhaps it would be more wise to not do stupid things. Social Shaping of Technology This theory argues that social, institutional, economical, and cultural factors shape the choices made about the forms of technological innovation, the content of technological artifacts and practices, and the outcomes and impacts of technological change from different groups in society. As we have seen, with events of new technology, we need to educate ourselves on how to use it. Rangel states that today, social media users should have the following five types of media literacy to be a critical consumer. The five literacies are Attention Participation, collaboration, network awareness, and critical consumption. I say if you have an iPhone, you have a video function, if you think your video is going to help you, uh, go for it. And uh, we will take all information, including video evidence, into consideration when we are investigating a, uh, a crime or an incident. What it provides everybody, the smartphone particularly, is it provides everybody with access to an ocean of information. The only issue is, can you take the time to look it up? A, B, will you look up more than one site so you know whether or not this is for real? And, you know, and, and A, B, and then C, can you process it and make use of the information? Nowadays, everybody's got access. I mean, if you take the divide example that happened here, it was an interesting interesting moment where everybody's there with their cameras and recordings and then they're asked by the police to deliver those up to the police and the majority of them apparently willingly did so. Now, I'm, I, I wonder about that. That to me is moves the whole thing over into surveillance and citizen surveillance. This is, it gets pretty close to citizen mutual surveillance of each other. And I think on that level it's very dangerous because the authorities that are behind the, the society still, the police and so on, um, <clears throat> they still have the, they still rule the roost. Uh, and you don't think that the images are going to be made available in a, in a surveillance context. So I think that's dangerous. I think there need to be lessons on how to use these technologies and how not to use it. With the capability of smartphones to record video, users have chosen to utilize this technology for personal use, citizen journalism, and the surveillance of others. Users can now be producers in their own media, however due to the vast network ability, content may become permanent as more people have access to these video posts. Therefore, people must be literate in the way they use smartphones, especially since their use of this technology has the potential to have serious social implications.